right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It depends on where you are connected from, whether you are in Switzerland or you are at the borderline or anywhere you are. Good to see all of you. My name is Emmanuel Adikbola, and I'm so excited to be on this show once again today, uh, Kina Earth Show. Uh, today we have a panelist uh, that will be discussing another important topics that I believe that all of us will need. And uh, of course, I'm not alone. Uh, in the studio, I have uh, my co-host and we have, uh, I'm not going to introduce him because he's going to be speaking to you from a different, different land. And watch out for his accent because even his accent has even changed since the time he traveled out of Nigeria also. So let me start from uh, our guest speakers or panelists to introduce themselves and then they say ladies first so let me start with dr mercy over to you just say hello to our viewers and introduce yourself what to do and if you are happy or somehow happy to be on the show. <laughs> okay hello everyone my name is dr mercy f wafe um i am in dfw or dallas area of texas and i am a physical therapist I am happy to be on the show. <laughs> and um, I am the owner and founder of Mercy's Touch Physical Therapy and Wellness. Um, I provide mobile physical therapy to patients throughout DFW, geriatric, um, active adults, and in the school setting as well for children with disabilities. So uh, thank you for having me on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And over to you, Dr. Chibuzo. Hey everyone, uh, I am Dr. Chibuz Okeke. Uh, I am also a physical therapist in the Dallas uh, Fort Worth Metroplex, uh, the owner of Ibiza Therapy uh, Mobile Practice. Uh, so we provide mobile physical therapy over the Metroplex. I'm also happy to be here uh, to be on this show to discuss physical therapy. I look forward to our discussion. Awesome, awesome. And to our co-host, Mr. Alex, over to you. My name is Alex Mwahiri. I am co-hosting this program with Dr. Emmanuel Anibola. You're all welcome. All right, all right. And I don't even think if I'm qualified to bring in this next person to introduce himself because he's not speaking from where the internet is shaking. He's speaking from where the internet is stable. Join me to welcome Dr. Bright as he introduces, uh, introduces himself. Thank you, Dr. Emmanuel. Bright Ugochipu is my name. I'm the executive director for programs, David Domenico Foundation. And I'm so happy and glad at the same time to be on this show at this time. Awesome, awesome. Your asset has changed. Is it the way you are even speaking? Oh my gosh. That's good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I join me to welcome also the woman white that conveyed us here, the host of this show, Dr. Kina Omineko, as she introduced today's uh, topic and also welcome you to the show. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of Kina Health Show. Um, today, um, we are going to um, discuss physical therapy or physiotherapy. Um, I don't know, many people probably do not know how critical um, physical therapy is to our healthcare system. Um, what do they really do? What do physical therapists do? And why is, it cons why is physical therapy considered um, um, a great pillar in a healthcare system? Well, we have the panelists here, the experts here today um, who have joined us. So stay tuned and um, enjoy the show. Let's hear from them. Welcome awesome, to awesome, awesome. And I'm going to pass over the part of this keynote to Mr. Alex as the part of the keynote of this show. Over to you, Mr. Alex. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Messi, like Dr. Adibola said, let's give uh, the women first. Uh, the, let's, let's go with that. Uh, despite the fact that uh, physiotherapy is a very important component of the healthcare sector, Many people, you will agree with me, don't know much about it. So I would want us to start by letting us know what is physiotherapy. 
Um, physical yeah, therapy, it's, it's a dynamic field, um, obviously one of the healthcare professions, but we really um, focus on improving in mobility and restoring function um, to individuals who've either been injured or um, have a disease process that might be limiting mobility. Um, so we, we put together um, our, our knowledge of the, sci of the physical um, components of the body and combine that with um, learning to put together an exercise program for patients or individuals to improve their movement and function. Uh, Dr. Chibuzo, let's also hear from you. So that, um... Yeah, um, just to add to what uh, Dr. Mercy had said, but I like to call physical therapists movement experts. Uh, we, what we do is use our knowledge of anatomy and physiology uh, to try to get people back moving again. Uh, so we use education, uh, we use physical rehabilitation and uh, modalities uh, in our toolbox to help uh, get people back to their prior level of function and get them doing, going back to doing what they love to do. Doc, Dr. Chibuzor, um, I know you, in defining physical therapy, you kind of alluded to some of the benefits. Could you elaborate on the um, benefits um, of physical therapy? Um, uh, physical therapy has a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits uh, as it pertains to uh, health in general. Uh, I would say the first thing will be prevention. So that's one of the things that we do is we help prevent injury, uh, we help restore function, and we also help in recovery. So when someone has uh, sustained an injury, uh, physical therapy is able to get them back yeah, like an athlete or someone who's had a neurological uh, accident, like a stroke, we are able to uh, give them uh, physical rehab to get them back to doing what they uh, were doing before. And also for a, a regular person who has not had an injury or who's also an athlete, we're able to help them maintain function, improve, and make them perform better, uh, uh, have optimal function, an opt optimal performance. Uh, so it's, these are some of the benefits of uh, physical therapy. Yeah, uh, Dr. Mercy, I, I want to add, um, do a follow up on the, on that um, what he has just said. Is physical therapy the same as exercising? Um, so there is a huge component of physical therapy is exercise. Um, I think. What makes it a little bit more specific is just, um, so we're trained to know how, like what exact exercises are going to impact um, the body parts that are either injured or need rehabilitation. Um, so there, a big component of physical therapy is exercise. We also add um, education in the sense of um, what activities to, to do, what activities not to do. Um, to prevent injury or re-injury. Um, so I think we, we combine exercise with um, education and um, just a, a, a lot of different elements um, for, to encompass what physical therapy is. But exercise is probably the most known um, aspect or tool that we use. All right. So by the way, if you are watching this uh, show, you're connected with us either on Facebook or on YouTube, please do us some kind of favor, share this video with someone. If you are connected on YouTube, like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And of course, these panelists are here, they, I mean, they come to this show free of charge. So how you can just appreciate their time is by you sharing it forward. And before we continue, we'd like to go on short commercial break because we have somebody special on this show that's going to be giving us reports from where he is and the, uh, of course, let's listen to Dr. Bright Ugochuko. I, I believe there's a program going on in the month of uh, October, November for David Domenico Foundation. And there's also a GoFundMe that has been going on. If you have not been part of it, the, uh, the link is showing right there on the screen. You can take the screenshot, you can take the picture and make sure you do something about it. So over to you, Dr. Bright, before we continue. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manuel. Uh, like I said before the show, I'm glad to be on the show. Um, the three-day uh, World Cancer Congress has ended uh, peacefully here in Geneva. And um, we thank God for a safe trip and um, a safe Congress. And uh, David Menoko Foundation was um, ably represented, courtesy of the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Kino Menoko. She was ably represented by me. And um, one striking thing, very important, which we all should um, be very careful. We, from the reports we are getting here, um, breast cancer prevalence is growing in men. And I want to believe, as we're here now, none of us men have undergone that um, um, screening called mammogram. And um, please, if we haven't, this is a wake up call. And um, when we say it is for indigent women, we are not being too fair because the reports we're having here um, indicate that um, the prevalence is coming up to 45% and is growing as at last time the, it was held um, during the COVID time, it was about 30 something, now it is 40 something. Who knows what will happen in the next two years? So that is um, part of um, why we why we came here. Then another um, program, another idea we we are able to tap from here. We are able to network very well on the current best practices in the global cancer control agenda, starting from advocacy and awareness, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and possible palliatives. We needed to know what is on board. We needed to know what the world is doing. So we thank God for the gift of the chief executive officer for her humanitarian gesture. It is um, um, it is it is something uh, commendable here because a lot of reports here show that um, cancer as a disease is even killing more than any other disease in the world. So we want to thank her and pray God to keep her for us. Now, um, for the program we're having in Nigeria, it is going to start on the 30th. And um, we have already started scheduling people. As I speak with you now, I registered about 86 women before I left. And others are on the waiting list. And you can see that um, it is not a child's play because the funds are not there. The funds are coming little by little. It costs not less than um, 35,000 Nigerian Naira to screen one person, which is, um, not a big, which, is, which is not a child's play. So we are encouraging our um, benefactors and benefactresses. We are encouraging our corporate institutions. We are co encouraging religious institutions to come to the aid of our people. If it is growing in men, that means in women, we are, we are finished already. So we are trying very much we can to make sure we stem down the um, scourge of cancer. Uh, as I speak to you here in Geneva, over 120 countries we are um, um, participated in this Congress and uh, more than 150 cancer organizations with different reports of um, the incidence and prevalence of various types of cancer in their own country. Thank wow. you. Wow, I, I believe if we give you the whole one hour, it's not enough. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this is this is so exciting. This is so exciting. Any question from anyone to Dr. Bright before we continue? Any question from anyone to Dr. Bright before we continue? Okay, if there's no question, then over to you, Mr. Alex. Okay. Um, Dr. Chibuzo, you were talking about prevention yes. um, when you were making your presentation. And um, I want you to explain, because from what you said, I used to think it was for those who had problem. But you are saying that somebody who is normal could need intervention. So how would you need? How would you know that you need intervention in well, order to benefit from the prevention you are talking about? Okay. I think uh, as a whole, um, when you look at physical therapy and the benefits of physical therapy, we try to, a lot of times people go to therapists or to go to uh, healthcare professionals after an injury, after something has happened. Uh, so I believe that 
the way that we can help prevent, especially for people who are athletes or people who are involved in activities where they're active, is by doing your year when you do your yearly screenings. Uh, when we do, uh, we in our clinic do assessments where we look at people and see, we look at their posture, we look at what they do every day, and we tell them, well, educate them on ways to incorporate uh, uh, the right way to do things to prevent an injury from happening uh, based on their occupation, based on the sports that they're involved in. We can do an assessment or a screening on them and assess ways to improve function so that it prevents an injury from happening or it maintains or optimizes the amount of strength that they have while they're performing their daily activities. So uh, the key is prevention helps out because it prevents the amount of injuries and ultimately those people come into us. So I believe that is a big component uh, of what we do as physical therapists and uh, being able to get patient, uh, people on the, on the front end before they've had an injury uh, is very important to what we do. Dr. Mercy, um, just to follow up on what Dr. Chibuzo just um, said, um, I know nurses um, quite often have a lot of um, lower back pain and um, there are several other um, different occupations like those working with UPS, there's always um, lower back injury. Um, is there any form of awareness that is created out there on how to um, educate people on their different day-to-day um, um, -day work on how to either how to um, lift or turn patients safely? You know, because um, how much do people know that there are actually techniques on how to carry out their day-to-day um, -day tasks? Very good. Um, yes. So uh, another aspect, like Chibo was there was saying, is um, ergonomic training. Um, looking at how people are working in their work setting, um, like how you were saying, nurses lifting um, patients, transferring. So physical therapy does also get in and train uh, clinicians on how to do those things safely and efficiently and effectively for the patient, so that um, you're preventing injury, uh, low back injuries or um, falls for the patients, um, things like this. Even pe people who are often on the computer um, in their professions, typing, um, physical therapy can go in and do a screen for work safety um, to assess the position of the computer to the keyboard, um, looking at different aspects like that. And then overall, like for a patient, um, fall prevention is so key in the geriatric um, population. So we want to see the patient before they fall rather than after they fall and sustain um, injuries. So we're looking at things like posture and training and um, safety throughout the house, you know, appropriate um, assisted, assisted, assisted devices like a walker or a cane um, that they may be using. So overall, um, we're always looking for ways to help, whether it's occupationally, um, for pay, for individuals while they're working or from the patient's side, how to prevent um, future injury or re-injury. Great. Yeah, Dr. Chibuzo, can we know how many types of physiotherapy you have? Well, there's so many different types of therapy, uh, but I, I'll go to a few of them, uh, which uh, one of them is auto, uh, auto uh, musculoskeletal, uh, physical therapy, um, which is the most common. So this is when someone has uh, or sees uh, therapies for an injury like a sprain or ankle, things things of that nature. A cardiopulmonary would be uh, where the physical therapies work with people that have cardiopulmonary issues like COPD, asthma, to help regain function. We also have pediatrics. This is where we see young ones. Uh, from zero to 18, and we see them a lot of times for injuries, but also some uh, with congenital uh, uh, issues. Uh, they're born uh, with issues like uh, cerebral palsy, uh, spina bifida. We also have uh, women's health, women's health. So we have therapists that work 
primarily with women. And a lot of, a lot of these uh, issues are things that women have after childbirth, um, like pelvic uh, disorders, uh, constipation, uh, uh, incontinence, uh, some of these issues that women tend to have uh, after giving birth. Uh, we also have sports uh, physical therapy or sports that, that deals just with athletes. So we deal with people who are runners, people who are performance, uh, who are uh, into performance. Uh, so we, we train, work with them, work with the personal trainers and make sure that they are fit, they, we prevent injury. And if they have been injured, we also help uh, get them back uh, on the team or doing what they love to do. And another one of the other ones is also wound care. Physical therapists also, this is one that a lot of people don't know that we do. We also work in wound care in the acute care setting uh, to help with healing, uh, using different modalities uh, to help uh, regain function and uh, helping people heal from their wounds. I think I've, I've kind of gotten most of it. Dr. Chibuzo, yes, you've mentioned quite a few. Yeah. I've also encountered um, physical therapies having something to do with dizziness or balance. Yeah. Is that something that you guys do? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's also another area of physical therapy, which is called vestibular rehab. So we work um, with uh, neurolog uh, neuro doctors or even PCPs. So, so sometimes we will get referrals for uh, vestibular. There's another niche of physical therapy where we help using different techniques uh, to teach people ways uh, to get better in their balance, to prevent falls. And we see a lot of that, especially in the geriatric population. So yes, you're, you're correct. Uh, this is a, another aspect of physical therapy as well. So is, uh, is massage part of uh, physiotherapy? Uh, massage um, is a component. It's, it's something in our toolbox that we use. Uh, so a question that I always get, or people always say, once you say you're a physical therapist is, oh, do you do massage? Yes, it is uh, something that we do, but it's not the only thing that we do. Uh, so it's just something that we can use um, if it calls for our plan of care. We see someone, let's say, who's, who's uh, had a, low, a lumbar injury, and we might use massage as one of the, uh, uh, one of the things that we use to help in their treatment. So it is uh, something that is a part of physical therapy, but not the only thing. Absolutely. I see. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Messi, we have been told the various types of physical therapies. And I don't know how you decide which one to use. And uh, is it also possible for us to know a little bit of what are the methods, what, what techniques do we really use in employing these various types? Sure. Um, so the first thing that we do um, when we see a new patient is do a thorough um, evaluation and assessment of the patient. We're asking about their history. Um, if we're talking about an injury, um, what happened? How long ago did it happen? Um, if we're talking about a chronic illness like um, Parkinson's or a, a stroke or something that has happened, um, we're, we're just gathering as much history as possible um, before we then can implement a plan um, and you know the different modalities that we can use. So um, in the examination, we're doing strength tests, we're checking balance, we're, we're looking at all the components and that's what helps us to decide what type of physical therapy to, to use, what type of modalities to use. Um, so if we're looking at somebody who has had um, some weakness, or um, you know, has lost strength in their muscles. Then we, you know, we start to prescribe different exercises that can tackle you know the specific uh, muscle groups. Or we're looking at, if we're looking at um, maybe some muscles that have been um, are too tight, or some that are you know too weak. Then we start looking at you know what stretches we need to include in the plan of care. Or if someone has had a stroke, um, we're using different techniques. Um, that can retrain the nerves on how to teach the muscles the right way to move. 
So there's there's a lot of different things like um, Dr. Chibazar mentioned. Um, massage is one aspect of manual therapy. Um, if you're trying to help with pain, with pain, um, you can use massage therapy. If you are trying to help reduce some swelling, that is maybe they're they're having um, swelling in a certain area. We can use certain massage techniques to get rid of the swelling or you know lymphatic drainage, kind of encourage um, improved circulation. So just depending on you know what we find in the in the evaluation, or you know we'll decide what we're using uh, in the therapy, including like um, ultrasound or um, different strategies like that. If we need to use those, we'll we'll try to find all that out through the exam examination process. Uh, just to just to put it out there, I know it's not part of our question, but uh, and I notice also that we've not been doing this, but I think it's very necessary. Also, we maybe possibly integrate it uh, to the questions. So just to some young adult or a teenager out there or someone that is still trying to choose a career or try to decide on a career path. So if someone is trying to become, let's say, okay, physiotherapist, what does it really entail? What does it entail academically to, you know, to get to where they can begin to practice? Okay. Uh, um. What Go ahead. You want me to go take that? Okay, yeah. Okay. So uh, to become a physical therapist, uh, I guess, in the United States, um, and you're coming, you're a young person who's coming out of high school, uh, first you need uh, a, the uh, a physical therapy now is a doctoral, uh, is at a doctorate level. So for you to practice uh, as a physical therapist now, uh, you would have gotten a, a, degree, a doctorate degree. But the first thing you need is a bachelor's degree. So you first get a bachelor's, uh, preferably in the sciences, and then you do four years of that. And then after that, you apply to a, a medical or graduate school uh, that has a physical therapy program. And then typically most programs are another three or four years. So in total, about seven years of uh, schooling uh, to become a physical therapist. And then after your, uh, after your schooling, then you also have to take a board exam. You take a board exam that is administered all over the country and everyone who practices has to pass that exam. And once you're done with that, then you can begin to practice as a physical therapist. And at that point, you can decide what area you want to practice in. Do you want to be either want to work with kids do you want to do geriatrics? Do you want to do women's health? Um, I always say for coming right out of school, it's good to work in an acute care setting or in a hospital to kind of get some experience. It kind of exposes you to a lot of things. And also during your schooling, you, you also do what's called internships or rotations. So you're able to kind of go through different settings that kind of lets you know kind of what area you and you will you will enjoy working in so i think that's kind of a little bit of an idea of what a young person who's looking to go into uh, physical therapy uh, will be expecting awesome uh yeah. dr messi you want to add to that um just i was going to mention and he mentioned it just at the end um just looking at the different areas of physical therapy um it's really important to try to diversify um the different internships you select to go to or even um, before I went to PT school, um, when I was an undergrad, um, just volunteering in different settings. I was I volunteered at an outpatient clinic and at a pediatric clinic just to see, get yourself hands-on exposure before you know you dive in. So just try to diversify. Try to get in neuro side, get to aquatic therapy, get you know as, as many different experiences as possible. Wow. That, that's one of that's a good one, um, Pastor Emmanuel. That way we can help the young ones um, to pick and choose, you know, oh, where yeah. direction um, they might want to go. Uh, thank you for that, um, um, Doctor uh, Chibuzo. I know I have been in home health for a very long time, and um, many times um, the patients that we see are homebound. Um, so they get physical therapy at home. And I'm also aware there's physical therapy 
um, outpatient physical therapy. How do individuals know um, which one they qualify or which one should they get? And the other day I had a physical therapist bump into my clinic. And so he told me he does in, in home, actually mobile outpatient physical therapy. So I was like, okay, so how many settings do we have? And how is, it seems all convoluted. Could you please um, kind of um, help us to um, tell us what's going on out there in the world now okay. and how patients can choose where they need to go when they need physical therapy? Well, there's different, like you said, different settings where you can get physical therapy. Uh, the traditional way uh, for uh, to, it will be the uh, will be outpatient physical therapy. So if either one of us now needed therapy for something, we had our doctor uh, recommend uh, PT for us. We would have a uh, prescription and we would go to a clinic to receive that. But also, a lot, what a lot of people don't know is that even though you can go into a clinic to receive that uh, uh, physical therapy. There's also uh, outpatient in-home um, therapy where a PT can come to your home, which is actually the type of physical therapy I also practice. So we're a mobile PT clinic, and we will come to your home uh, to see you for physical therapy. You don't have to be homebound, um, like Dr. Kenna said. We can actually see you. Uh, for physical therapy in your home, in your office. And a lot of people prefer this because maybe they can't make it to their appointments. Maybe their schedules are too hectic, or maybe they have issues with transportation. And then also, um, there's also a form of therapy, which is through the home health agencies. I think that's the one you're alluding to, where you have patients who are homebound. They cannot leave the home. So this is a different form of therapy. Um, and typically, most of these patients will be on some kind of nursing care. So they, they'll be seeing a nurse for something uh, um, through a home health agency. The home health agency can uh, either contract or have a physical therapy on staff who would see that patient at home. So this patient has to be homebound. They cannot, they're not able to leave their home. And I think under insurance uh, is built on a different form of insurance uh, to be able to receive that therapy. So it's based on the circumstance. So yes, if you're homebound, you can get physical therapy. If you're not homebound, you can also get physical therapy at home. Um, and you can also go out to the clinic and get physical therapy. Another also setting that you can get therapy would be in like a skilled nursing facility. So a lot of times you have people who have left the hospital, um, they're doing well, but they're not doing well enough to go back home. So they might end up going to either a skilled nursing facility or a rehab facility where they can get more intense physical therapy before they return back home. Um, um, so th that's also another setting where we provide that physical therapy. I hope that helps. Makes sense. Uh, okay, Dr. Um, Messi, I don't know whether you have any addition. Otherwise, we go on to ask. And there are, there are sometimes people finish physical therapy and they start having some pains. Does it have any side effect? And if it is, what are they? And why do they sure. experience pains sometimes? Okay. I will add one other um, setting um, is the school setting. Um, from the prior question, um, I see patients as well, uh, or students at school uh, who have different conditions like cerebral palsy or other congenital issues or, um, yeah, so th that's mostly it. If they, uh, those students who are at school and have some physical or motor limitations, um, we help, we come into the school and help them to be able to improve how they can access the academic um, experience or setting. So that's um, just one additional setting that physical therapy is in. And then as far as um, your question on pain, uh, yeah, I will say um, pain is definitely not 
um, the goal of physical therapy. However, we are working with um, injured tissues a lot of the time. So if you have a sprain or a strain um, or, you know, other um, posture, postural issues, um, pain may be a part of um, what you experience in or after physical therapy, or especially like if you've had a surgery, uh, if you've had a total knee replacement or a back surgery, um, tissues are very tender. So in doing exercises that are appropriate, uh, we definitely don't want to do um, exercises that would harm the tissue further. So we, you know, are educated to be able to know how to scale the exercises to be appropriate for where you are. Um, but pain can be, I guess, I guess a side effect or um, something that you might experience after therapy, but it really isn't the goal and it shouldn't be um, something that would make you not want to um, do your therapy because um, I'll say it's, it's not because like we always hear that the no pain, no gain um, idea in the therapy world that just doesn't apply because we're not going for pain, we're going for healing. And if pain is a part of that, it, it might be, and we're often trying to work against that or prevent that. Um, but just in the natural um, healing of a tissue, um, pain might be something that you experience. Okay, I'm going to ask this question also. It's not part of the scripted ones, but it's what I've experienced. And uh, I don't know if there's really any relationship between it and the uh, physical therapy. I remember when I was in the North, uh, I could do not to be precise, and I had, a, I had a fracture. Now, what they did then was they took me to this Hausa man. <laughs> and uh, of course, the what the Hausa man did was he asked my dad to go and buy uh, a chicken. So they bought a chicken. So when they brought the chicken, so what they did, because I was I was wide awake, so I knew what was going on. So they broke the leg of the chicken at that particular spot that I had a, a broken leg. So it was the chicken that they were treating. They were not actually treating me. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Chibuza is smiling. <laughs> And I know this, has, this has no any, any corresponding in the book, right? Yeah. But <laughs> as they were taking care of the chicken, <laughs> as, the, as the leg of the chicken was getting well, my leg was getting well. <laughs> At the moment the chicken was able to walk and jump, I jump on my feet also. And I was <laughs> so is there any relationship between that? <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Did you practice Not in Nigeria? But uh, Mr. Alex, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah, no, 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 no. You know, our people do a lot of funny things, and um, mm. so uh, I'm not surprised that they do that because I have already had I had once a broken leg, and uh, but they 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 managed in touching me. Why did <laughs> you know that when they were doing other compulsions? But at least I was touched. So yeah, can we really call that one trado? Physical therapy. Yeah, own is, is is very peculiar because you say you were not touched. At least I was touched. No, this one well, was not touched. Well, well, he was healed by faith. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. I just want us to know that that he, he is was healed story. by faith. <laughs> Over okay. to you, Mr. Alex. Okay, uh, uh, Doctor Messi. We also hear about about aquatic physical therapy. So, what does that mean? Okay, is, it so an, aquatic, is, it, is it another setting? Um, I guess you could call it another setting or just another tool because what we're using is just a, a pool or water-based therapy. Um, and we do that because uh, water has certain properties that make the healing um, or the goals that we're trying to, to reach easier. <laughs> For example, if a patient has a fracture, like we've talked about, like a fractured leg, um, a lot of the times the doctor might say um, the patient can't put any weight on their leg, they're non-weight bearing um, on land. However, in water, um, because of the property of buoyancy, um, it makes the weight bearing possible to where you can actually do walking and strengthening exercises in the water versus you're not able to do them yet on land. Um, so that's something that we, we use um, for different conditions. Also, we can use it... Um, something because viscosity, viscosity is another property of water that allows us to 
work on stretching or strengthening different things that might be difficult on land um, because of maybe a patient is fearful to do it and water has a more calming effect or um, you know, just based on their condition, maybe you're not able to do it on land, whereas in water, the, the water is helping you to achieve those goals as far as stretching or strengthening um, because of its properties. So we can also use the temperature. Temperature in water is, is another thing that we can use. If you have your body fully submersed in either a hot pool or a cool pool, it brings out different things like circulation, which can also help in the healing process. So it's just another tool that we can use um, if it's available for patients. And all of my patients have really enjoyed aquatic therapy. Wow. Wow. That's so interesting. Um, Dr. Chibuzor, um, I know pharmacists can sometimes prescribe and they can inject medications. Uh, is that the same for physical therapy? Is there anything that you guys can prescribe? Uh, we can prescribe exercise. <laughs> we're, um, but in the United States, no, we're not able to prescribe medications. Uh, we're not able to uh, prescribe injections. Uh, I, it might be different in other parts of the world, but for the United States and, and, we'll, and, and our practice laws, no, we're not able to do that. All right. So mm -hmm. just to kind of jump in there also before we continue, there's this program that has been going on, so I would like uh, Dr. Kina to talk about it for one, two minutes. I know uh, Dr. Bright made mention of it when he was here a little bit ago. So you want to talk about the free mammogram program going on and how our audience can be part of it and possibly even some of the panelists? Sure. Um, so October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, as we heard earlier from Dr. Bright, um, he went to a three-day conference in Geneva, Switzerland, and um, information that they're gathering there is that uh, the prevalence of breast cancer keeps growing, not only in women, but in, in men as well. So it has become very, very critical for us to continue our campaign on um, breast cancer awareness and, and not just breast cancer and other types of cancer to eradicate the scourge of cancer in the society. And we can do this only by, not only by screening, education, creating awareness and, and programs like this. So um, every October, David Domenico Foundation um, does a free mammogram program um, back in the Southeast Nigeria um, for now. And um, our donations come from individuals, uh, we meaning people, government, uh, local organizations, and uh, corporate offices. So we, uh, we have a GoFundMe um, running um, currently, and uh, our screenings actually is going to start from October 30th, and we run it for a whole month. And it's first come, first serve, and um, we do this in our Emo state. So the phone numbers are there. The GoFundMe link is on the screen. Um, please join us, save one more life as we continue these screening exercises. Um, the burden is huge and um, we need all hands on desk to help us achieve our goal. So this year we want to screen over a thousand women and men, I must say, uh, with the new information we're gathering. So help us, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And just like the title of the book that is coming also says, it takes a village, okay? Cancer takes a village. So I uh, will look forward to see your hand. Okay, back to you, Mr. Alex. Yeah, Dr. Messi, after a person is given physical, uh, uh, physical therapy, how fast does the person begin to experience relief? what what is the what is the window yeah how soon okay um i'll say it really is hard to give a, a time frame honestly because every um condition is so different and every patient is so different um but if we wanted to break down um different time frames for for example if someone has a fractured bone maybe the doctor has given them a window of six to eight weeks to wait there um, so then that, you know, takes a, a period of time before we can um, start doing those activities. 
However, um, I'll say like in physical therapy, um, the goal really is per session, we wanna make some amount of improvement. So whether it's something so um, small as, you know, one degree of pain, maybe you you came in at an eight out of 10 pain, and hopefully by the end of the week, you can say we're at seven out of 10 pain or something. You know, it's just so, it's so different. Um, every condition is so different. It's hard to just give a, a, a time frame that would be, you know, if you don't see progress in this amount of time, then this and this. Um, I don't know. What do you think from your experience, Dr. G? Yeah, um, I agree with uh, Dr. Mercy that we can't really put a time to um, how long it would take because every condition is different. You know, someone who maybe is diabetic, um, if you're dealing in uh, in wound care, they will take a little a little bit longer to heal. Um, someone who's had a a severe sprain as opposed to someone who's had a mild sprain. So it all depends on you know the evaluation that we do and what we come up with as our plan of care will determine how long it will take. And even at that point, it still might not, it still might be different because everyone's body is different in terms of the progress. And the one thing I, I want to add to what Dr. Mercy says is also the consistency in seeing progress. A lot of times we have uh, patients that we see. They come in for their therapy sessions maybe two or three times a week. And then the rest of the week, they don't do anything else, right? So we we have to uh, typically, uh, and, and when we uh, prescribe, uh, a, when we come up with a plan of care, we also come up with a home exercise program, something for them to do so that there's that consistency. And if they're able to do that and are consistent with doing everything they've been prescribed, then they'll see results much sooner than someone who doesn't do anything at all, if that makes sense. Sure. So that brings me to my next question for you. If somebody cannot do the exercise themselves, can you do it for them? I mean, typically you want them to be able to, but there are certain um, uh, situations where uh, they're not able to. Um, let's say someone is in a hospital or someone has suffered an injury where they're not able, they don't have active range of motion. Active means they're not able to lift their arms or their legs on their own. So we can do what's called active assisted range of motion or passive range of motion. Active assisted is where maybe they give a little bit. They give like maybe a 50% and we do the other 50 for them. And then passive range will be they can't do anything at all. Um, and we're able to just help them do range of motion to help improve flexibility. Uh, uh, you can see that even in patients who are in the ICU, right? So in the ICU, they're not able to do anything. But we're going in there and we're doing passive range of motions so that when they're able to now begin to move, they're not, those muscles haven't gotten so tight and those muscles haven't gotten, so we're maintaining flexibility even at a time when they're not able to do anything at all. So yes, in certain situations, we can do it for them, but the goal ultimately is for them to do it themselves. Wow, that's, that's good. Um, Dr. Mercy, can you share with us some of the challenges physical therapists face in um, performing their day-to-day -day duties? Okay, um, so I'll say um, one of the, the things that I think is a struggle in a lot of different healthcare settings is um, insurance. Insurance might be a limiting factor for how many visits we get. If, if um, somehow it's deemed appropriate for only, let's say, five sessions of, ser of therapy after a patient has had a total knee replacement, which is actually a case of what I've seen um, in the past few months. So things like that can be a limiting factor, trying to kind of work that uh, within the system uh, where we have certain limitations such as frequency and the number of visits we get. Um, another thing uh, that was just mentioned is just compliance with the exercise program. Um, a lot of patients are really ambitious and want to see that progress. And then some others, they wanna see the progress but they may not be willing to put in the work outside of the therapy sessions or in the therapy sessions. So. Um, sometimes we have to be, you know, 
the biggest cheerleader possible there, as well as, you know, implementing the, the program. And um, one thing that we can run into is just that the motivation is not there when therapy is not in. Or um, in the example of a, somebody who either lives alone or doesn't have um, supportive family, um, we might be limited there as well, because it really does like like the book that you wrote, Take a Village, um, it does take a village um, for rehabilitation as well. So it helps to have a supportive uh, family system or caregiver team. And sometimes that's just not the case. So what's the difference, if I may ask, what's the difference between physical therapist actually and occupational therapist? Because I know we have we have OT, we have PT, but sometimes what they do kind of look alike. Yeah, there's an overlap. There's an overlap. Um, but I think um, the biggest way to kind of differentiate the two, um, physical therapy looks at like the gross motor or the larger motions. Um, a lot of times you'll see walking or the gait training um, transfers in and out of the shower or into a car. Um, some of those larger motions. Occupational therapy is helping a lot with the um, activities of daily living. For example, um, you know, like get, pulling up your pants, getting dressed, um, going to the bathroom and cleaning oneself, things like that. Um, and that, and just in self-care, getting, putting your socks on, maybe they have difficulty in that. Um, so that, that's how I would really differentiate it. Um, occupational therapy, you can see reteaching maybe a stroke patient how to brush their teeth and clean their hair or strengthen their shoulders enough to be able to reach, you know, behind them to pull their shirt down, things like that. Um, Whereas physical therapy with the same stroke patient might be helping them to transfer in and out of bed and start to walk again. Um, and again, there's overlap because we each help each other out in those in those treatments. Yeah, Dr. Chibuzo, one of the primary goals of the, your profession is to minimize pain, manage pain, reduce it, and if possible, eliminate it. And that what comes to my mind is arthritis patients. Most of them find it difficult to walk and they have severe pain. So do you where do you come in? If they have to, if they come to you for assistance, what will you do? How will you handle their case? Yeah, well, uh, we have a of course, uh, we have a lot of uh, patients who deal with you know some form of arthritis, you know, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and this is uh more like a condition that is, you know, that we can help uh, with. And the, the biggest thing that I, as a physical therapist, can do for them is to help uh, strengthen the muscles around those joints. So if you have someone that comes in with arthritis of the knee, uh, we can help and they have pain. We can help with using different modalities, you know, like ultrasound, uh, uh, using soft tissue mobilization or manual therapy around those joints. Uh, also looking at how they ambulate. Do they need an assistive device? Um, if they're walking without a cane, could they benefit from using a cane or a, a, a walker? Uh, so these kind of things are things that the therapist can help them with to help maybe modify their lifestyle and reduce pain and also teach them uh, ways uh, to live better so they're able to not let this thing be a hindrance for them going forward. So yes, absolutely. In, in therapy, this is something that we can do. Uh, and, and they're a big population that we work with. I have a follow-up question on that. So um, arthritis, from my understanding, is uh, there is a wear and tear on, on the knee. So are there certain exercises that can make things worse? Or if somebody is still able to run, uh, is that okay? Again, um, it depends on the severity uh, or the stage that they're in. You know, uh, Sometimes you have people who have bone on bone, right? Um, you know, the ligaments are no longer what they used to be, especially in the geriatric population. So they're, they're not able to uh, do those things. Uh, so the, the one thing that helps uh, uh, for these patients is having some kind of imaging, you know? So if I have a patient who I'm seeing and we've, we've done different things to help with pain reduction and we're not seeing any significant change, 
I would recommend, or sometimes I will consult, have a conversation with their physician to maybe get some x-rays, to get some imaging, to look at what's going on in the joint. Uh, and that would help give us a better picture. Uh, but yes, um, whatever they can tolerate, you know, if they're able to, maybe they were doing 10 miles, but now they can only do one or two without, with less pain. Okay. That's what we want to do. Um, but if they're not able to, so we don't want them doing things that will cause more pain, like Dr. Mercy was saying. So our goal is to help reduce pain and also modify their lifestyle to be able to enjoy doing the things that they do, but without causing them more pain. Yeah, uh, let me see one last question. Sure. What, how will you describe, how, what, how, if you were to look at Terra Edia's profession, what is unique about it? What do you think is unique about physiotherapy in the healthcare system? Okay, um, I think what makes us unique is that we are able to um, take such a big, a big study of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, you know, all the components of, you know, what makes the body work and move well. Um, and then we combine it with kind of the art of healing because it's so different for everybody. So you have to be able to um, take one, you know, patient scenario that you've seen who has arthritis and look at another patient who has arthritis and put together a whole different plan because they could be very different, you know, in how they present or, you um, you know, what conditions they have or, uh, you know, what equipment they have access to. So I think it's just, I find it unique that we get to combine the science behind physical therapy with the art of healing and work, you know, to improve individuals' lives, to improve their quality of life. So that's what I, I enjoy. All right. Our time is fast spent. Uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful session. We have less than three minutes to tidy up this uh if you are you the panelists could just do me a favor type in your social media handles and uh, type it on the private chat so i'll be able to display to our audience in case they want to get in touch with you and uh, also as we normally do we have we love to give what we call elevators a speech uh, like a take home less than one minute 30 seconds if our dr kina has something to say before we go into that no Okay, so uh, we have just less than two minutes to do that, and the ladies first as usual. So we go start from you. So let's say someone has been watching us, and you want this person to go home with just a point, just one thing, just one thing. In summary, what we'll be discussing today about their health in relationship with physiotherapy. What would that be? Over to you, Doctor Messi. Okay, um, I'll just say that if an individual is watching who may have different limitations, whether from an injury or um, a new diagnosis or an old, old diagnosis, and maybe they're, they're feeling like um, there's a restriction in what they can do or they're no longer able to do what they used to enjoy doing, um, reach out to a physical therapist or talk to your doctor about a referral um, because there's a lot of things that we can do to return you to the things that you like to do or maybe modify it. But um, we really do like to improve the quality of life and that's something we can do together through physical therapy. Awesome, awesome. Over to you, Dr. Chibuza. And for me, I would say, um, just to keep it simple, motion is lotion. Uh, that's, that's a saying that I, I, I use all the time. So motion is lotion. Motion is lotion. You know, move, get up, get active. And the more you move, the less problems you're going to have. And that's what a physical therapist can do for you. We can get you moving again and doing the things that you love. Motion is lotion. All right. I got that. Okay. Uh, be, uh, before Mr. Alex uh, share his uh, take home, we thank you, our audience, and to the bad one out there. You try to hijack today's show, but the devil is a liar. You are blocked. <laughs> Please try not to do that again. Someone almost hijacked our show today, but we thank God that we landed well. Over to you, Mr. Alex, your take home today from today's show. Yeah, my take home is that if you really want to get moving and get your body lubricated, you need to connect the physical therapist. Initially, I used to think that they were there, there to restore, 
But today I also know they can prevent you from going down. Thank you. Because motion <laughs> is lotion. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. My name is Emmanuel Adeguela. Once again, it's been a wonderful, wonderful session. And to tidy this up, over to you, the host, Dr. Kina. Wow. Every every time we have our show, it just seems like endless um, information and knowledge that we pick from every one of them. I learned a lot of things today that I didn't know. Um, having been in the healthcare industry also for a lo very long time. So that shows sure. that we can not stop learning. Um, I want to thank our panelists. It was a wonderful show, very knowledgeable, very great information. And for our viewers, um, everything we always say goes down to the same thing. Um, take care of yourself, move. The more you move, the better for you. And um, like I was asking about exercise and physical therapy, we've talked about exercise for so long and for so many times that what you do today will take you far. Um, so please move, 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 move and take care of yourselves and um, get a physical therapist to um, look into any situation that you might have. And again, get back with your doctor as always. Thank you. And um, we'll see you all in the next few weeks.